Let's have a quick look. What are we on? What big warrior against Mage Tekka? We are. Boop, boop. There we go. Yeah, this is. Ooh, it's actually. Looks like this is more of the uh, the also buff related taunt warrior. Because we've seen some warriors that are the infinite Zilliax with with the um, the mm. monstrosities, right? And stuff like that. But this looks like it's leaning a little bit more into taunt specifically. <laughs> what sound would the Amalka make? Surely it would move. Yeah, it's just it's <laughs> the, that unreleased cow type that's buried in the game files that you don't know about. But yeah. obviously we've seen it. Oh wow! Actually, just like regular yog box for any spell in the game. Not even, not even five plus. <laughs> just a straight up yog box. I mean, obviously, <laughs> that went pretty well. Yeah, not too bad at all. Get to swing into this eight one as well. Hmm. They don't have rush. Oh uh, no! She's got two attack, hasn't she? Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. Yeah, maybe you don't want to take it, but uh, why not, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Oh, what are these cheeses up to now? <laughs> 14, 20 cheese. A 22, 28. So happy. Yeah, because I can say it and it's relevant. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, uh, I've waited many, you know, I've waited many years for this day. <laughs> But honestly, like, this is going to be a problem because when you said that, you're like, how big is this cheese? I zoned out because that's <laughs> you don't what know I what do. card I'm talking I... about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you do that, normally that is a thing you do four hours into a cast. And I just zone out and wait for you to clarify what you're talking about because I have no way of working now it you out have anyway. To guess. But... <laughs> I, I now have you to... actually mean the cheese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... But now what that's I'll do is start problem. calling them different cheeses. <laughs> and see if you can really keep up. <laughs> Sorry, this unbuffed yog box just cleared. By the way, yeah, that's actually that's not silly. that's not a spell mage yog box. That was just an any card in Hearthstone yog box, and it cleared that board with Shadow Word. Oh, I didn't even notice this. Did you notice we've got a a thingy anomaly? Oh, we do have an anomaly. Yeah. Unspent mana equals coin. Okay. Who's the Cho'Gal gamer then? I want to say, I feel like Old Guardian. Hmm. Yeah, look, uh, yeah I what, don't think Sunset Volley's going to get there. No. Somewhere. Unlike this 8-8, it's not looking so cool. Okay, I definitely want to watch another Old Guardian game, because I... Want to see what the build up to this point is? Obviously, mm -hmm. there's there's a taunt focus. We can see it with the turtles and stuff, but I kind of just want to see what the uh, how we actually get there. Let me un unspectate and then respectate. Okay, our guardian is queuing again, so we will be able to jump in one uh, fairly quickly. But it is, so I mean, it is flashy, right? When you've just got your, your monstrosity making 30-30s for you. But that does lose immediately to the Unkiliax deck that we saw before, right? Like, there's no way this version of the deck keeps up with the version it does, we saw with you and It does, but can't this version playing? run that as well, maybe? Maybe, yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, I don't think I have Emerald Boa on the list, which is a shame, because I'm sure... They were last time. <laughs> Maybe they're on busy or like offline. I don't know. Uh, oh, I know this. Yeah, I think they're streaming. Yeah, I think. Oh yeah, there you go. It was old guardian with Cho. What did we get at the end of each turn? Uh, plays turns. Give a random one of their minions plus one health fortifications. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that one extra health will uh, help the 35 health <laughs> cheese enormously. Oh wait, yeah. What is this? Warrior with the. Uh... The mech opening, okay. Job done. Now we've got a real mystery here as to uh, what mech warrior is doing. He's full aggro opening. 
Yep. Playing cards, hit and face. Oh, Nothing I'm wrong with the game plan so far. I'm sorry if I just trolled everyone watching. You might have just heard a Windows disconnect sound. It was me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Disaster. <laughs> My bad. You also might not have, because it depends how I've set the audio up, but you might have. Okay. So we can see some of the buffs that Old Guardian's using already, right? Yeah. Chorus Rift makes sense. Black Rock and Roll obviously does make sense as well, because the, the monstrosity is a nine. It just immediately gets a colossal buff from that. And I guess, like, yeah, Chogol does make a little bit of sense of this as well, because, like, at least it has the taunt synergy. Right? Yeah. Like, that yeah, makes yeah. some degree of sense. I'm sure it is in there for fun, first and foremost. My opponent played a two mana cheese in arena. <laughs> oh god, it's spreading. <laughs> well, yeah, you can do that. Okay, wait. Amalgam deck? I am sure the the Broads uh, gatekeepers win Jambre is big boy Amalgam deck. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So this is the thing that keeps happening, right? Is you do see this a lot as you get into the later stages of these theory crafts is player A cues into player B and goes, oh, that's a sick idea. Yeah, and then yeah, messages yeah, yeah, and yeah. gets the code and then just starts playing it, right? Like, I'm sure that's what's happened with WeQ or Tic Tac, whichever way around that happened. I'm sure that has happened. Yeah. Amalgam meta resident sleep. Does playing a 30 30 Wind Fury lifesteal cleave every turn not amuse you? It amuses me. I know, yeah, that is, I would argue, not a resident sleeper. <laughs> I I think some of these people were not around during the uh, Frostlich Jaina meta, so. <laughs> yeah. That, no, oh, yeah. No, that was a challenge. <laughs> what? what I. I wouldn't have given for a 30-30 Rush Wind Fury lifesteal oh, yeah. to play every turn against that stupid deck. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Those were the uh, the Dark Ages. <laughs> Where both players would bend over backwards to not have a minion on one health at the end of every turn. <laughs> yeah, like... yeah, yeah. You're just like fireballing your own 3-1. <laughs> just so you're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ping it. Ugh. The most you could say is, how can these players count to one? <laughs> <laughs> I still remember, and this is something that, like, you know, maybe we shouldn't talk about. But I was just about to say the exact same yeah. thing. I know exactly what you're about the, to say. Go ahead, go ahead. During HGG, which was when that meta was prevalent and was very, very yeah. popular, um, me and Sol cast a whole match, uh, and, and I think maybe multiple mirrors maybe it was one game i can't remember uh where we decided that we what needed to cast the whole mirror without saying frostlitz jaina once and uh we managed to and those are the lengths we, did, we go yeah. to those are the lengths we go to to uh <laughs> keep, keep to going through ourselves. tough times yeah. during and then it, it did so no so lorinda's it, it, the original idea was between me and raven in a specific hgg cast yeah but then I then went to an event that Raven wasn't at and I spread it to like Admirable <laughs> and someone else. So it, it, it became a thing that did go on for longer, but yeah. the original thing was just from me and Raven at, at HGG. It was just like, one, it was just a way to amuse ourselves in a game that is so boring. And secondly, it is actually a fun challenge because the we had only to talk about thing, it. <laughs> the only <laughs> thing that matters in the entire deck when you play the mirror is. Do you have an are you playing Frostlitz Jaina? Everything else is completely irrelevant. So being able to yap for like 30 straight minutes without talking about the only actual relevant <laughs> yeah. thing is on the street on the screen. It was fun. Oof, so it's Blast Tortoise as well. So that is a nice little chunk of damage. Oof, and the one extra health, so it's all added up. Never mind. <laughs> a 
buff Zilliac. So yeah, it's, it is. We have seen the uh, Cup of Muscle. I think it's called like the Warrior Drink, which is a hand buff card, repeatable plus two yeah. with plus one to a to a minion in your hand, which makes sense why we're using the Duplicate Zilliac just to get the hand buffs going. But then I do Im imagine an amalgam worms its way in here, right? Even it if, feels even if it like just it. Yeah. hand buffs and magnetic, right? That still feels kind of worth. I'd be very interested to see where Warrior lands. Oh, that crane. <laughs> I mean, it still gives 15-1 to the, to the monstrosity. It's still pretty good. To be fair, I think you'd rather give it 15 attack than health, maybe, right? Yeah, once it's, it's already got, like, 20-plus health, yeah. yeah, you just want it to give massive attack, so it's just one-shot lethal. <laughs> this is 34 36 bouldering buddy in old guardian's hand oh jeez i was just gonna say oh do you, do you think he needs to brawl this board <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> not at all i do think you play if you want to play a boulder you, you play the small one right you simply do not need the big one yet Gah. cowardice i didn't come here to watch cowardice yeah, incoming garage gift. <laughs> like, for all go. Do you remember playing against Blood Reaver Gul'dan? That was ours. Uh, yes. I've played every Hearthstone meta that exists. I've casted pretty much every Hearthstone meta that exists as well. The, uh, the Gul'dan was... I don't I feel like Gul'dan mirrors actually ended, though. Whereas the yeah, Jaina mirrors was... didn't. Because Blood Reaver Gul'dan tended to bring back six Doom Guards when you played it. So yeah, because it was Cube as well, ended, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. So, like, those Cube games, was the yeah. biggest deck that played it. Yeah, those games would there was, end. There was the infamous Cube Lock versus Taunt Druid matchup. Though, oh, where you sure. had, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gul'dan was just suck hero powering, and then Malf had the armor or the attack hero power, and, yeah. and the entire board was just, like, 5-7 Doom Guards against, like, 4-6 Taunts for just literally every turn for the rest of the game. That was yeah, fun. You're supposed to fatigue them. You're supposed to fatigue them, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just don't attack face until turn 25. <laughs> <laughs> We'll uh, pass over to our Fireback correspondent. <laughs> Thanks, Fireback. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Nom, nom, nom. Yeah, yeah, Moobot, Moobot quite aggressively uh, takes on Copypasta for some reason. Well, I know the reason. It's got a maximum message length on it. What does the signature card do? I don't do? have the power to change that. Um, for one, it's the Taurus card for Warrior. So it allows the Warrior to play the Druid cards from this new expansion only. Um, but also, it basically chumps an enemy card or an enemy uh, minion in your opponent's <laughs> deck. And uh, it gains... Uh, it's 2-2, two, 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 right? I'm not going... 2-2? Two, 3-3, two? Uh, three, three, I think. Oh, is it 3-3? Three, three? Sorry. Oh, no, it gains 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 three, three. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, its effect is fine to whatever, but its main effect in Warrior, at least from what we've seen, is giving the Warrior the Druid cards, which are very, very powerful indeed. <laughs> um, let's see if... Uh, oh, uh, no hands is in a game. We can see what no hands is up to. I'm not checked in with sure. that. Yeah, I'm down for some no hands. I was just very amusing. I looked over at chat and then looked back, and uh, you know, the little like deck tracker damage counter icon for how mm -hmm. much damage you have in play. And I just looked back and it just said 72. <laughs> yeah, the huge. <laughs> yeah, I think that's lethal. Yeah, okay. We've got Priest from No Hands Gamer, but of course, it is uh, some kind of buff uh, meme priest, which I expect nothing less. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Less of this less of this meme priest business. No, I mean more like um uh not control. <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
I think a lot of priest players would say not playing slow control decks as priest would be a meme. But uh, No Hands has um, shown a fondness for these automaton decks before, so it's not a great surprise to see him trying this kind of thing out. But we do have an Onkeliax entering the chat. Oh, and someone else who has clearly been entering the chat is a name that's actually fairly easy to say. Tempo EFN has won our latest Ooh. mega bundle. Tempo EFN, please message at Ridiculous Hat, who may or may not pop up in chat to at you in a second. Congratulations, you have won a mega bundle. I believe it's a Tempofen. Tempofen, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of parrots going on here, Sal. Some Sasquarks. Some pet parrots. Uh, and I've heard, like, repeating cards might be quite good with Automaton. Is the new expansion bussing? Well, I, it depends, Derek. What are your feelings towards 30-30 Rush, Wind Fury, Lifesteal Cleaves that you can play every single turn? Yeah. Imagine the last meta you played a lot of, and then... X10 all the stats. <laughs> oh, look at this Sasquark. Wait, if you Sasquark and Sasquark, does that fill the board? What? Huh? You mean if you did one one turn and one the next? Oh, yeah, it won't, right? It's still just a one. They don't yeah, repeat it's just the, the battle cry. Yeah, 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 it just yeah, plays yeah, the yeah. body, yeah. <laughs> Very pro whatever you said. That's the kind of winning attitude I've come to expect from you, Derek. <laughs> And also, a very useful skill to develop, considering what you're doing this weekend. <laughs> Just hold on to that attitude and you'll do fine. <laughs> okay, we've got more fish. There's also more parrot. The theme of Hunter. Oh, <laughs> Oh, chat just broke me. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> God, God damn it. <sighs> Honestly, goddamn Zoomers and their TikTok memes. Yep. Oh, that got me good. Favorite class I've seen so far? Um, I like the uh, Lanessa OTK Paladin. Mm. That seems like my vibe. People can have their Rush Cleave 3030s. I'll shoot them in the face. I like the Rush Cleave 3030s. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be shooting Raven in the face. Yeah. Nothing changes. Okay, little worms. Look at this worm's face. <laughs> Wait, does that worm have teeth? The worms have teeth? What's a worm? Oh, this worm. No, worms don't have teeth. No. <laughs> Why has that one got teeth? <laughs> Why is this your question? Get David it's Attenborough like back. animated worm. Get David Attenborough back. <laughs> what the? Wait, do hands wear clothes? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, an eye patch is fine. You could put an eye patch on a worm. I mean, you could. You, I don't think you could stick teeth in a worm. <laughs> people, just... people would have questions for yeah. you, but you could if you wanted to. Hand clothes are gloves. You can't <laughs> argue with that. <laughs> it's just a fancy looking glove.
Are we playing the Sasquatch again? I'm not sure it does. So the problem is the Sasquatch would make another Raden, mm. which would then give you massive overkill on board space for I all of so, your yeah. automatons. Which is a pain, so it might just be Armenthal and chip away at the board instead. Oh, you do also have um, Chilling Belgium. You can just 3 7 your 1 1 and vice versa. That's kind of good too. Mm. You can also do both. Earthworm Jim has eyes and teeth. Did Earthworm Jim have teeth? He did. I can't picture Earthworm Jim. Yeah, oh, I can. Well, Shudder Block is very funny, isn't it? Hmm. Can't dispute that it is funny. I was checking uh, if there's any Voon potential, but not really, right? You just get another Sasquatch. Yeah. Wait. Wait a minute. Mm -mm -mm. Is that an infinite? Doing what? Oh, sorry? The beauty of nature. Oh no, it won't what? be right. What are you trying to do? Just think of the weird Voon Sasquatch stuff. If you have two Sasquatchs. The, the, the repeat. Oh no, again, the, you'd need yeah, the battle cry. Yeah, 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 the repeat word throws me off. Yeah. In my brain, repeat is just play. <laughs> Wow, the Armenthal just lives, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes dealing with this ENR a lot easier. How many Astral Automatons are inside these things? Does anyone know? No one knows, right? There's there's no possible way anyone knows what's coming out of this Radin. Uh... If anyone thinks they know, type exactly what and with how many stats is coming out of this Radin in chat. You've right got about now. one set. Not too late. <laughs> Unlucky, you lose. Yeah, no one said that. No, no one was guessing that. No. Not in a million years. Repeat doesn't trigger back. No, no, it's just a flavor word for parrots because parrots repeat things. It's literally just the same as, um, you know, Summon. how Murazond and all of those other cards have worked before. Like, if your opponent played a minion with Battlecry and then you play a Murazond, you just get the body. That's the same way that the Yeah, it's just work. Summon, right, basically? Yeah, yeah. I was typing that. Yeah, yeah, of course you were. My hand is full. Oh, Mr. Vistagon, okay. This is kind of one of those relentless pushes because at no real point has it looked like uh, I check on the druid has been, you know, provide any danger. Right? There is the Alexstrasza. Well, I've not even really noticed much damage. So this is just too much, I think, from No Hands Gamer. Yeah, parrots repeat things. Worms have teeth. Hands wear clothes. We've, this, okay. I, I think we've been very clear. It all makes sense to me. How much longer would the stream go for today? What are we on? Pro uh, approximately two and a quarter hours from now. Oh, no, roughly. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. No, uh, no, Tom. Uh, Automatons. No. The hits do keep on coming here. That well, okay. Apart yeah. from the fact that they're just Lethal. dead. Yeah. <laughs> apart from the fact <laughs> of didn't need anymore. Well, it's so it's so fun because you can go shutter block Grifter this turn, and then mini shutter block and Sasquatch the turn after. But sadly, <laughs> you have to just win the game instead, which is very annoying. <laughs> Needs to take a leaf out of Rauran's book. 
Yeah, just, just AFK instead. Yeah, skip a few turns. Okay, let's go back to us just for a second. Uh, we'll see. I think we got the gist there of No Hands is Priest. Uh, who mm -hmm. else? Has anyone shown up to the party that we've not checked in with yet? Uh, Cantaloupe? Don't think we've seen Cantaloupe yet, right? Oh, is Lopan? Cantaloupe, I believe, has just appeared. Oh, yeah. They are Bronze 10 and queuing a game. Imagine only being Bronze 10. Have right. a little look-see. <laughs> I and, kind of uh, cringe, am I right? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. Um, going against another audio, uh, it's going to be Death Knight for Lope. Uh, going up against a warrior. So we're going to see uh, Lope, I'm guessing, his first few forays with Death Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, like, like you can tell, you can tell Lope's just got here, right? Because they're in, they're in the five hours ago meta. They're, yeah. they're playing location Death Knight, you know? That's yeah. the first thing that you got to cue. Also, I got wrecked by Terrible Chef in Arena today. Oh, it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah my pump played uh, that. I was like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. It's <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, good. I was like, I guess I, it's in arena. I guess I've to lost. be clear, I'm not telling anyone yes, to put it yeah, in yeah, constructed yeah. decks, but yeah, yeah. yeah, it's really good. Arena. But yeah, they just played it, and I had to read it and go, all oh, right, mm, that's a lot of stats. <laughs> yep. Oh, but yeah. here's the cheese. <laughs> I did. I immediately just went, oh god, here he goes. Oh no, no, he does actually mean cheese. Respect me. <laughs> <That> never. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's a lot of armor, though, and a lot of card draw. Also, this I might have said warrior so earlier good. when this is clearly Shaman. <laughs> I got baited by the uh, portrait. The combination oh, of the portrait so and of playing arena, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's just warrior with the Shaman era power. It's fine. <laughs> well, they are playing Aftershock. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Looks like warrior to me. It on three cast. Yeah, like this is what I, was, I think I was talking to Lorinda about this early, but even just that turn playing the cheese, it's been really yeah. good, right? You just summon yeah. three three drops on turn five for two mana. Like, yeah, really really strong. Wait, is Cantaloupe playing arena? There's this freaking cryopractors in here as well. That's a mega arena card. Just gotta try out some cards. Presumably, if you use this to buff your amalgam, it would just be frozen forever as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doesn't seem ideal. That's to buff the egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. That that thing that you definitely need buffing when mm -hmm. you're your self-activated it. To buff the cheese. <laughs> Coconut cannoneer after an adjacent minion attacks. Yeah, this guy's good. Yeah. I think it's seen more in the uh, the Demon Hunter deck, right? Mm -hmm. Just because you generate so many 1-1s. One oh, look at this. Perfect positioning. Flawless. The greatest to ever do it. So now, sadly, if uh, Shaman swings... The the weapon here, then Cantaloupe is just getting an egg. That weapon deals three damage mm -hmm. to the lowest health target, I think. Is it lowest health or is it random? I'm forgetting. Lowest health. Actually. Lowest health. It is lowest. lowest I health. Forgot uh, I, could just, I forgot enemy. I was also spectating and could just mouse yeah. over it. Then lowest second. health enemy. Yeah. Oof. Ooh, well, nice. well, well. Yeah, swing into the two one. It kills. But then can it? it one can of the two. The yeah, it can hit that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, seems good. Because right? what happens if it does hit the egg? It's still not that bad, right? Maybe it's fine. I'm not gonna think that hard about it. Plus one if a character is frozen. Yeah, see? Right, Wait, so is this like blue, blue, green Death Knight, maybe? I'm trying to think of anything double green or red has been played yet. I don't think it has. I don't think so, no. 
Is it playing like the 3-8 maybe? I mean, okay, you're, this is why like you play blue and green in every death night that you play ever, because this card is mandatory. It's just the best card in Hearthstone. Uh, yeah, that probably wasn't the order. Yeah. Oh, also, it was the Rexa should have been next to the 1 4, right? Uh, where well, depends what you want to attack into. Oh, no, no, sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking it gets buffed. It doesn't. It just does yeah. one attack, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It just deals one damage. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he's got two Lanessas off the cheese. It does say twice and not an extra time, right? Yeah, it does say twice. Okay, so it's still only twice. Yeah, we're safe. We're safe. <laughs> twice, okay. is, twice is twice. You get a whole bunch of mining casualties right now if you have it. Hmm. Here we go. Perfect. Perfect target. Yeah. Buff it again. That's a lot of stuff. That is a lot yeah, of tempo. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I'm not necessarily a believer in the freeze package, but that is absolutely a lot of stuff that just happened. I know this is probably easy to say, like right now after you know a few hours, but I do think every time I see people playing like a new deck or class or you know however you want to split that, I keep thinking, oh yeah, I really want to try that. You know, like after every single one, yeah. there's not been like yeah, yeah, yeah. one thing where I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to touch that. Like all of the stuff looks really cool. Yeah, I, I I really like how like explosive this expansion is. Mm. Like it's definitely the kind of Hearthstone I like. Like I've generally come out of these theory crafting things with like two or three decks that I want to play. And then, you know, because we get a couple of hours to do that afterwards for the service closed down. I then play those couple of decks. I'm like, oh, cool, yeah, I'm really excited for the expansion now. There's so many decks that I've seen already, plus ideas that I've had already, that I know I will run out of time to test them yeah. and actually will yeah. just have to be starting from scratch on expansion day, which is a good place to be. Mm. Very excited. Even this, I mean, earlier on, you were casting, right? This Incendius with the Shudder block. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I want to do that to someone. <laughs> like, you know, I shuffle a million of them in. Just be like, yeah, there you go. I think, what was it, 30 in I think it was 30 in, in total, yeah. 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 There's the Lope emote. Impressive. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this is it, right? Like, again, Lope's just logged on, so Lope's going to be yeah. like, hang on, let me just message and get the code for this bad yeah. boy. I'll add this into the rotation. And look at it. Oh, only one? Are we getting another? Still coming, still coming. Oh, no. Wow. Brutal. Unlikely, yeah. Because <laughs> that's three spells specifically as well that that yeah. was drawing, so. Brutal. Yeah, that is really, I, I really like that as an option though, because that is that incendious thing is very strong, but it requires some setup and it doesn't just auto win because they're just do dealing one initially, right? Yeah, so but that like, is a cool combo that you can just hit on 10 mana, right? The, yeah. To go, you know, have the Shutter Block already played, you play the Incendius, and then you can go mini Shutter Block and yeah. a draw thing to, yeah. you know, whatever draw battle cry to, to go through your deck, which is mm -hmm. yeah, kind of good on 10. Uh, we'll stick with Lope for now, going up against Kibler this time. I will have to, I think I will have to quickly uh, respect though, everyone. I do apologize. It's just the, the world okay. we live in. Uh, but yeah, we will stick with Lope. Uh, against uh, Kibler. Reese. I want to see more of this freeze. And I know people like to see what Kibler's been cooking up. We've not checked in for him, uh, checked in with him, sorry, for uh, for a while anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kibler on the those those old man hours was uh, with us for the start of EU time. Yeah. He, he gets up at like five o'clock in the morning or whatever. But yeah. 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 Already when you were like, yeah, yeah, get some time after the the show to play some. No, I'm going straight to bed because I'm on that old yeah, man time yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. But for the other reason. Oh, and here's Eliza in hand for Cantaloupe. So this is when the deck uh, is probably at max power, right? Is when you can play this on curve yep. or play it in a way that sets you up to uh, give it Reborn or proc its death that, on multiple ways in, in whatever fashion. That does confirm that it's rainbow as well because obviously Eliza is... Uh, oh, bloody yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all three, yeah. 
Yeah, look, this stacks some damage, right? This cannon dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Kibler's on the no hands train. Impressive. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah, with the little parrots. So, yeah, two, a five, six, and a three, five. Wait, why are they desync? Because they both got the shield buff, right? The um, power cord buff. Oh, this one's got a bird in the hand on it as well. Mm. Okay. Yeah, both players at least are uh, looking like they're both doing the powerful thing, right? Eliza's down with a nice little opening there from Lope, but will these automatons be too strong? Oh, and the amalgams makes sense. I actually don't have Kibler's POV yet. Hang on, bear with me. Kapow. Yeah, fanboy. Makes sense with the Malvin. Mm -hmm. Kibler, of course. No stranger to fanboys. So makes sense. <laughs> that was the most, yes, I'm humouring you noise I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. This might be a little bit tricky to fight back. Yeah, very behind, but the um, the token summon cards do fight back real quick against this once yeah. you've uh, had the Eliza come down. Like, Ghoul's Knight is still a ton of damage, like, clears this board. Like, even this, like, you leave the 5-5 five five up just with what you're looking at now, and there you go, there's, there's a freaking Dreadhound Handler. Yeah, it's a lot, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, I mean, board control returns next turn, almost certainly now. Okay. <laughs> oh, AFK, speaking of K. <laughs> Fishing rod as well, like, uh, weirdly powerful. Yeah. Almost Especially built for Amalgam, amount. right? Like, almost built yeah, yeah. for that card. Yeah. The Chef's even more OP. So this is a huge swing turn, right? Yes, because don't have, uh, the Rare Straws is safe, right? Not likely. Uh, likely. Can we hit some minions, please? Oh, okay. okay. Fair enough. I think this is nine, right? It's Cantaloupe face gamer, surely. Oh, wait, oh, yeah. yeah, he's playing that. Yeah yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, with that, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, the, the dog doesn't have a... Uh, the thing doesn't have rush, right? No, I think I probably would have rushed it in anyway, but yeah, mm. this doesn't, doesn't really make it. Either way, as long as the race trials went face, yep. I'm okay with it. Here's the thing, though. Can this... Obviously, we've not seen the exact death list from Kibler, but does the Priest give the Amalgam anything but stats? Yeah, that's a good question. I think because this is a hybrid deck, right, with the mm. Automatons, um, because presumably, once you've played... Well, I don't know, actually. If you play an Amalgam, and then a Death Rattles goes back in your deck, is that then still the same Amalgam that started in your deck, or does it get resummoned from uh, from Raden at that point. I think it's probably the same, right? I that's what I would expect yeah, too. And I think, I think there is I think there's precedent for that in a card that I can't think of hmm. right now, but yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure obviously because I haven't seen the interaction. With the fan it can get Russian lifesteal. Ah uh, Yes. That makes sense. But yep, Kibble's gonna um, bow out. Yeah, that is. One of my favorite Simpsons quotes. Honestly, we don't we, we you don't, don't have time to ask me that question. I've already been doing not once but twice but thrice during the stream, <laughs> to which I then responded, "It's a perfectly cromulent." I was going to say cromulent is me. one of the best. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I just I don't know. It's just so good. Um, uh, I was saying Boo Earns is also fantastic. We'll jump over to uh, being Rachel. 
uh, just because I don't think we've seen them online yet. And I'm at the point now where I'm just uh, jumping for people. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. I think I'm supposed to rotate out now. <laughs> You are, you are indeed. indeed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, on it, but yeah. this is what this does to me, guys. I could just sit and talk about this stuff all day. Uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to disappear off. You guys uh, enjoy it. It's uh, Bean Rachel versus uh, Lugosi. All right, then. You got it. How's it going, Art of Ice? Good. Been testing out some decks in, in my uh, extended break, ready to close out the show. Oh, yeah, you've had, uh, you've had a few hours off right now, I think. Yeah, I I have the sandwich of casting slots. Right now. <laughs> you have the, the top right two and the bottom two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I've been been checking out the stream, been trying my own stuff. Uh, starting to see a few people play some mage now. That oh, uh, okay. That tourist card for mage that summons two cost minions with divine shield. Yeah. That can really snowball some games very, very quickly. So that's been fun. What else have you played personally so far? Well, being me, I've got some weird stuff. <laughs> Always uh, a good stuff. Are you familiar with Line Cook in Warrior? Yes. So, two, four, or three cost, two, four, taunt, tradable. Uh, when you draw it, you get a copy of it. Yeah. Basically, it's it's a full control deck where the only <laughs> minions are are line cook and and ham. So you get you know the druid ramp, and and the goal is to just hand buff line cook and you just trade it and you play the copies and and you always make sure that you have a a buffed copy still in your deck. Okay, and how did that work out for you? Uh, okay, I didn't okay. get to finish the last game because I had to. Uh, jump over to start casting. <laughs> so there are right. some long matchups. I'll take a solid okay. That's better than I thought <laughs> that answer was going to go. I mean, you are full control, right? So some decks, you just run them out of stuff. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Have you run into uh, Weak U or Tic Tac playing Infinite Unkiliax Warrior, though? How, how does your deck differ against that? <laughs> no, I, I don't think I would do very well. No. <laughs> okay, okay, so. good. <laughs> yeah, it, it was one of those things that just kind of, it took me a minute to remember that, oh yeah, that's a taunt minion that you can resummon from a hydration station. That's filthy. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so true. being able to have boom and <laughs> hydration station to bring it back. I did encounter someone, I don't know if this was intentional, but it seemed like their goal was just to resummon Ham a bunch. Oh, okay. I don't I don't know if it was just they, they couldn't find the opportunity to play other taunts, or if the goal was really to just summon a bunch of Hams for eating minions out of the opposing deck. Just chomp the whole deck, huh? Okay. Yeah. This uh, Tsunami card has been more impactful than I thought. I feel like I was more positive than a lot of people on this card, and yet it seems to be carrying in like every druid and mage game that we're seeing so far. Freeze. It's doing a lot of work. Yeah, Freeze feels pretty relevant, and yeah. just three water elements. Like, summon three water elementals would would be an okay card. But the fact that they attack immediately yes. is a huge difference. Like, if there's any kind of big spell mage, it is because of that card. I think because of the, you know, the aura that's, you know, replay every spell you've played since this was in play, it's just, it's the best outcome you can get from that as well, just to throw some, at sure. least one of these in there at any point during that, and it's just so much control over the course of those turns. Yeah, I'm glad to see that you've actually come across people playing that card, because my perspective so far on the Druid Tourist and Mage has just been... It's a five cost card that the Aulonius deck never has an opportunity to play because they're yeah, on the defense yeah, the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I think Druid, we've seen quite a wide variety of, of win conditions, which is 
generally the case, right? Like early expansion. So, okay, here's all the expensive things I can do with all of my ramp cards. And then it just sort of, you find out what the alpha predator is, right? For, for yeah. which is actually the best strategy. Yeah, and the Alonius deck with Seabreeze Chalice can do an insane amount of yes. damage. <laughs> yep. Anyone know what this upside card down card is doing, by the way? It's a, on the stream and on my spectator as well. Something weird's happening. Do you have an upside down card on your spectator? I do not. Oh, sorry, that's very mis a, a reverse card that's showing the golden card back as opposed to a card. Yeah, I do. Ah, What's no, I, I do. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay G gift wrapped. What? Oh, it's not gift wrapped. Well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. no idea. Nope. Strange visual bug. Mm. <laughs> what Living his best of... life as a golden card back. <laughs> it is. That is true. Yeah. What, what do you think of King Tide? Uh, not much so far. Haven't really seen it had a, a huge impact in the games that I've been watching. I don't think. Do you have you have thoughts? I, you know, I'm I'm kind of on the fence about it. I wonder if it's just one of those things where like it's it's necessary if you want to be able to play some of these big spells early. Uh, mm -hmm. I have noticed that you know it's a great tech card if you don't need it to cheese something out. If your Miracle Paladin opponent is about to go off, then you can play King Tide to sort of lock them out. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it it both like reduces and increases costs makes it sort of weird to evaluate. Yeah, I think the first time we saw it, it was played, and then Barney Hopper immediately top decked Necrotic Explosion for five. Yeah, yep, yep, like, exactly. Well, okay. Um, so yeah, it hasn't had the best showing, but yeah, it's the kind of card that if you like, if we rewind like five years or whatever it was, it's probably longer than that. I'm so old to the like the original big spell mage. You would uh -huh. murder someone for that card in that <laughs> deck, right? Like unironically. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, Hearthstone having moved on, I'm just not quite sure. Um, probably a little more necessary in mage itself than in druid because druid can just get to the the mana naturally a lot easier. But yeah, we'll see. Right. And it looks like this says just like a taunt warrior is just a little too slow. Not having the clears and stuff to be able to keep up. This is uh, doing the thing though. We're making a whole bunch of hams, but yeah, probably not uh -huh. quite going to uh, get over the line. Particularly, is it, my goodness, it is a slow card, isn't it? Damage copy that goes dormant, that takes a long yeah. time oh, to yeah. do anything relevant. Crimson Expanse, I, I think, is one of the most niche and maybe just worst locations mm -hmm. that, that we've seen. Like, I've, I've yet to see a deck that's, like, really able to capitalize off it. I feel like you need something that benefits from being dormant to be able to use it. Like Magtheridon or something. Yeah, as someone is pointing out in chat, if you did not know this, uh, you can play with these expansion cards in Arena right now, which if you're like me and don't regularly play Arena, there's a good chance you have like 20 or 30 Arena tickets just built up on your account that you might not even know about. So you can just go play Arena for free and mess around with some of these cards right now before it actually launches next week. So Worth a shot. Like I know I, 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 tickets, yeah. I know I always forget about that. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, looks like Lugosi is going to take this one down. The Taunt Warrior just being a little slower. And is it, it's an interesting part of the stream, this, right? Because yeah. we have the Americas players waking up and logging on for the night shift. And it does seem to take them a little while to like catch up with where the Europe players got to five hours into them playing decks. Um, so, yeah, I think if you look at what, like, WeQ and Tic Tac were doing with Warrior, uh, a little more further down the line than uh, some of those initial taunt builds early on. But also, there's just, 
sometimes it's just a, a player difference, right? Where WeQ and Tic Tac will just be looking for the sweatiest win at all cost builds that you can possibly find. And some people are motivated by other things like having uh -huh. fun, as crazy as that sounds. What winning is fun, Saddle? Come on. It is, yeah. No, no. Don't have to tell me. Uh, so that means what they should switch to is just the pirate demon hunter uh, to, to just murder all those druids. You know, I got turned yes. forward earlier. Did you? Wait, okay. So what, what was on the board? How did you die that? Was it just lots of patches off the top? Or was it the uh, the like the buff guy and the attack guy sticking? Or what, what happened? I mean, it, it was just like brain masseuse into coin, slid, like sock slither spear. Right, 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 okay. And then they had the totem. Right, and that, that totem that give, just gives you two attack with the uh, sock slither spear is just a ton of damage. Yes. And then it was like... Give pirate wind fury. Give pirate wind fury. <laughs> ac ac acupuncture. Like it was just brutal. Nice. So we are being informed we're going to jump into a language hacker game. It sounds like he's just finishing up uh, one game. So we're going to jump into the next game in progress. Uh, like I said, we'll be dipping in with a few more America's players now because they are just uh, waking up and getting started. Uh, just scrolling through now, if we can take a look at McBanterface maybe afterwards as well, now that he's online. Let's see what Banter's cooking up. Um, but yeah, I'm, I was just saying, I believe, to Raven, just as you came on, that I think this is the expansion that's hit me with the most like ideas. Like I literally have a notepad file open that I'm just writing things down on as they occur to me. So like, oh, play, in, play in like 50 minutes time when I get off of this, but also just for, for launch day as well. I think of all of the theory crafting events that I've done, I think you've been involved with most, if not all of them at this point as well. This is the one where I feel like I have no chance of trying everything I want to try in my downtime between actually doing the cast as well. Like I'm still going to have a long list of things to try uh, when I get oh, to next week. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's just no way because the possibilities opened up with even running a tourist for a, a couple of cards is yeah. monumental, yeah. right? Like there's shaman can do pirate stuff from demon hunter, or it could also do like thunderbringer big minion stuff. Cause they got, uh, what that cliff diving or whatever it's called. I forget where you pull two minions out of your deck. Mm -hmm. So there's just, there's just so many, possibilities when it's it's not just three dual class cards <laughs> just getting access to the the whole set is uh it's pretty crazy it's such an incredibly ambitious undertaking as well like I, I i am certain that there are some things some interactions that maybe slip under the radar things that will be incredibly powerful right and we'll have uh -huh. to be a little bit patient and tolerant for that because they're trying to like balance dual class Hearthstone now, but basically, right? There are limitations yeah. and it's been designed around that, but like the level of complexity that goes into it is, is kind of incredible. And that's what makes it so difficult to theory craft for and so difficult to deck build for. Because even in like card reviews, like most card reviews are pretty clueless, even by, you know, the best players at this point. The, the hit rate uh -huh. is, is pretty medium. But every card review now is like looking at cards like, okay, yeah, yeah, this doesn't seem good or this seems broken. And then they get to like the other class that's the tourism class or whatever. And you just have to go back and completely reevaluate everything that you've just said about all of the other cards. So I'm looking forward yeah, you, to it. You really have to be looking at just, just go and evaluate pairs of classes at once because just, just seeing them in a vacuum doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So we are jumping into some language hacker versus big house hacker on the mage. What is this portrait? Well, I think this may be a Sif mage. So we'll, we'll have to see if it's in there, but uh, touristing into Paladin gives you access to inherent holy cards. And then also something like service ace where you can use the sunscreens to discount your sif uh i don't know if hacker runs it but there is now a card i expect to see a ton of play in paladin where you draw draw your lowest cost death rattle draw your highest so you then have a yeah. tutor for sif yes monstrous card in arena i have seen an awful lot of that over the last day or so sure 
and then just all these little sunscreens, like if you ever draw the, the tourist card itself, uh, four mana, two, five, every time you cast a spell, you summon a, a two cost minion with divine shield. Yeah. That just creates uh, incredible swings. The, the one kind of annoying thing, it doesn't really matter because life-saving aura is holy, but the sunscreens don't have a tag. Meanwhile, Big House on Rogue does seem to be cycle-heavy deck. I'm imagining that there is a shack in here somewhere. Possibly a Giants deck as well with the gear shift and quick pick that we've seen as well. Seems incredibly draw-heavy. B. I, I like the Swarthy Sword Shiner. This is a, a card that you can almost just hero power onto and swing and then play it on three and now yeah. you've got a three three weapons really good tempo but then if you do have something like a quick pick being able to extend it out is is very very handy sea breeze chalice has been picked up now we can we saw several turns ago that the theory of sif mage was confirmed <laughs> Sif coming off the top four language hacker so yeah already you see the wisdom down to two already, and with uh, with Seabreeze Chalice being so cheap and repeatable and representing so much damage, that is a it's a scary deck for sure. Definitely something to keep an eye on. I do wonder how it will compare to your Aulonius Druids, just because without something like Swipe to clear the path, you may have a harder time getting the Chalice to go face. Mm hmm. Oh, hold on, just to butt in on this conversation in chat, because it's sometimes not clear what people mean by this. The tourist effect is, that's a deck building mechanic that's live for the whole game, right? It's not like you can only play your rogue cards while the rogue tourist is in play. That's just deck building. However, the, the rest of the text on the tourist card, that's a live effect. That has to be in play for it to work. That's not just like a, a start of game aura or anything like that. It's just that question comes up a lot, and pe the, it's two questions in one, and it's never quite clear what people mean when they say it. Of like, do the tourist cards effects last throughout the game? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And some of the other text is more relevant than others. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Some of them are cards that you actively want to play. Some of them are cards that you put in your deck at the start of the game to just have the tourism and you would just quite happily leave them in your deck forever. <laughs> Seems this like the metro is big and buffed up. There are a lot of big stats being thrown around from lots yeah. of different decks, yeah. And we haven't really seen anyone try hand buff paladin either, which is the, the you know the current king of doing that in the meta game at the moment. Which I don't see any reason why it can't continue to do that with some of the new cards it's been given. But I don't think yeah, anyone no wants to be hand buff paladin person coming into theory crafting, do they? No, uh, no sand castles seen today. No, not a single one. I was I was gassing that card up big at the start of the day. No, we haven't seen a single one yet. Maybe after we're done now, I'll, I'll be the person to play Head Buff Paladin. It's a little sure. tough getting 10 cards in, but you can do it. And there some she is. Some of Hatches and some are OP even without the tourist thing. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Yeah. So Rayla Sand Sculptor coming into hand for Language Hacker. This is the main sort of pop-off card, and I think it's going to make it really interesting to give Sif Mage like another plan of attack. Mm hmm I wonder if we'll almost see like some greedy partners make it into the list. Sure. Yeah, people have kind of been scrambling for Sif Mage win conditions. I think since the snake oil change, right? Like there's the version yeah. now that uses the discounted frost spell to just buy one, get one freeze on your own Sif and do it that way. But uh, certainly Rayla. Sif Rayla, if you can get the discount in there to be able to do that, that works too. Yeah, and based on the mantle shaper, it looks more like language hackers going for like a win on board strategy with Sif backup. It's 
unfortunately, it doesn't have any of the Paladin drink, because that one is very nice for being able to protect the Rayla, right? Just being able to give her Divine Shield. Uh, really nice to be able to give yourself Divine Shield defensively as well. Or, as Lorinda was suggesting, if you're playing against Painlock, just give your opponent Divine Shield, and then there you go. No no Molten Giants. You're free. <laughs> I, I guess, yeah. <laughs> how, how, how do they deal with it? They don't have a weapon. So yeah. they have they have to play you just their, play uh... their five six and it does zero damage to them. It's incredible. <laughs> it's the best tech I've ever heard. Yeah, ignore the fact that they just get a three out of five six still. That's, shush, that's fine. Shush, shush, shush. Don't worry, it's fine. Now that sailboat captain, that's something that can go in hand buff palette. Oh, <laughs> just a one yes. of for deck hand. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes. A one-off for deckhand is obviously powerful. You do kind of have that already with Outfitter, right? Because that does yeah. still kind of double the damage, essentially, if you've had them both in hands getting buffed. But having a third copy of it, or just being able to play both of them, so uh -huh. that you just outfit Taylor and Win Fury all in the same turn, yeah. I don't see why not. And as I was saying to Lorinda early, like, Handbuff Paladin does currently play four or five bad cards. Like, it, there's two or three different lists that change what those last four or five bad cards are. So there is room in that deck to play mm -hmm. some other stuff. Wow, big house with the Cult Neophyte tech must be tired of the Miracle Paladins. Yeah, imagine. You're just already tech carding in theory crafting. Yep, yep. I didn't see the attacks that were available on the far right. I was like, wait, what is that ping about? You probably want to kill the 3-1 and be alive, but no, it's okay. We've got minions attacking. I might almost have to just be like Marin trying to do something next turn. Discover deckhand is lethal, right? Yeah, that's just lethal. Oh, okay. It's lethal deckhand. with uh, with Raphael's all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. GG. Oh, I, I forgot as well. There's off of Recruiter, there's the strangest pirate, right? Where it's useless if you put it in your deck. It's a six mana six, six, but has charge if it didn't start in your deck. Yes! Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that completely. No, that was a good point. So there's incentive to actually have some of this discover a pirate stuff just to be able to hit that pirate. Mm hmm Yeah, I got hit by that in Arena as well. It was literally the first... Was, I hadn't known that card existed, and it was just a random summon. Of, I don't know whether it was Firelands Portal, maybe? Probably sounds like the most likely thing for it to come off, and it just appears and hits uh -huh. me in the face. Uh, wh wh what? Why does this have charge? And then read it. And I was like, okay, I guess that makes sense. If you really yeah. want things to just be extra powerful when they come from random effects, then sure, we can get on board with that. That's okay. <laughs> Sounds like ETC synergy. It does sound like ETC synergy, doesn't it? That, that's a, it's a terrible I, idea that I can kind of get on board with. How does that, I mean, does that count? Is, is it should ETC's count, right? Band because not part of your deck? Yeah, because you can put second copies of Highlander cards in ETC, right? So they're, they're, they're not in your deck by that precedent. So I would imagine it didn't start in your deck. Like, it makes sense to me. Try out. See what happens. Why not? I've had uh, I've heard worse ideas of what to put in ETC. It's not in your deck, it's in ETC. Yeah, exactly. Uh, going over to Silent Nick versus Curly Wordy. Oh, got some Warlock again. Haven't seen Warlock in a little while at this point. Yeah, I haven't seen too many Warlocks either. I've seen Rogues with the Warlock Legendary. The, mm -hmm. the Oribos one.
Well, we do have Paladin against Painlock, so if we were ever going to see someone Divine Shield their opponent. Uh, it might just be Crusader or a... I guess not enough of this is necessarily sticking around. I might not have traded... Silverhead there, right? You could just keep another minion around? Yeah, just the 1-1 one, one and the ghoul trades, and then the other one goes face, right? Yeah, I think so. All right, here we go. We we get the cheese to set up for Lanessa double cheese turn. <laughs> it's happening. It is happening. Okay, one thing else I've got to say about the signature arts is when signature art like this is on a spell... I, I just, I do a double take because I'm like, this is a spell. This is not a minion. Even though it prominently features this burly man spiking a volleyball over a net. Oh, what? yeah, it took me a few seconds to even realize what you were talking. I did not consider for a second that this wasn't a minion the entire time that you were talking. Like, what? What is going on? But yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. That is strange. I agree. That has fully broken my brain. Nice. Nice fat amalgam. That's what we like to see. Yep, yep. It's crazy how many decks are just making use of amalgam here. Like, Paladin, because of the draw your lowest and highest, can find it again. Mm -hmm. And then there's also Boogie Down to tutor it out of the deck. Yeah. Uh, fishing Rod as well, we've seen. Summoning a one cost from your deck. Yep. Good with uh, this and Automaton. I think uh, Kibler was playing Automaton Priest with, with Amalgams in as well. There's just so much targeted draw in various classes. Yep. That, uh, it, it seems like so many have the their own way of just finding the Amalgams over and over again, whether it's you know drawing a particular uh, type of minion or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like any, anything that's like draw a beast in Hunter or like take to the skies in, in Druid is going to draw it for you as a dragon. Like just, there's so much targeted draw that you can just hit amalgams over and over. It's just, or, it's more draw... about what special effects your class can provide to the amalgams yeah. more so than being able to fetch it, right? Yeah. So like everyone can give it taunt because of magnetize there's the two mm -hmm. five i don't know what other magnetize effect effects warrior had the cleave right yeah we saw um the duplicate mech being used in rogue as well which is obviously completely gross oh, if you have yep. enough time to be able to do that yep yep But I think uh, ways to give it rush are by far the most important thing, or else, you know, you're just yeah. going to get tempoed out by this kind of board from Curly Wordy, right? Like, your amalgams just do nothing against this unless they're, like, rushing and cleaving immediately or something. Yeah, and Paladin does have access to Dance Floor to give rush, so that's yep. one way. Rogue, of course, has the spark bots, and so in that case, you can kind of find anything if you get lucky enough. Does the Amalgam gain the Magnetize feature actually mag- Oh, I see. No, 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 no. Just the effects of whatever you magnetized onto it, but not actually the Magnetize keyword itself, no. That would be pretty silly. <laughs> it would, yeah. Yeah, I kind of wonder if last turn you just had to go for the, the double cheese the rather than setting up the weapon. Well, this is awkward. I suppose you can get the sunscreen off of this. Oh, you don't need yeah. it anyway, you can just trade off. But are you still dead on board? Yeah. You do have plenty of sunscreen though, that is something. Yep. 
It's always good to have, you know? Mm -hmm. Baz Luhrmann would be proud. <laughs> So I'm not sure, did we actually see any new cards played in that Warlock? <laughs> it's just occurring to me. Uh, the the legendary, right? The the one that summons Ouroboros. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, came down right at the end. Yeah, okay. That's fair. But I don't know. We did miss the start, so it could have been, uh, you know, Flame Imp into the plus three, plus three buff. And we didn't see sure. quite how the damage yeah. was done early on, I suppose. Yeah, there are a few new self damage cards that have been added like the the one that deals three to you and summons two one ones kind yep. of a, a different form of flame imp yep um and then i think the one of the hardest cards to evaluate is the two drop that gains stats for every point of damage you've taken because you kind of look at that and go wow like that fits perfectly in pain lock but then you sort of start thinking about how big it is it's for you know we're, we're at that stage you're like well two mana six six am i really interested in putting that in my deck and like that sounds bizarre when you say it out loud but pain lock is i think quite a tight deck in terms of cards that you'd have to cut to fit that in yeah does it work with the blood tree in no no it doesn't no yeah it's, so at that point it, it becomes a lot harder to squeeze in right if you you're playing that three cost to deal five to yourself that's kind of the biggest you can get it I actually feel like it, it might almost have more of a shot in Rogue, where you could potentially just hit something yeah. with a weapon. Yeah. And so, mana-wise, you're not spending much to make it large. <laughs> what is happening here? Wicked Good is desperately trying to amalgam, but I don't think it's going to get them very far. Yeah, I mean, these Amalgam decks take some time to build up, right? So mm -hmm. you are kind of, unless you get proper defensive things going. Yeah, just hang out with Wicked for another game since that one was uh, was so quick. Looks like Wicked good at uh, Bronze 10 has only just got online as well. So uh, this might be their, uh, their first theory. They might even be straight back to the deck builder. Go, okay, well, that didn't work. Try something else. Oh, oh there's see. already a bunch of decks queued in, don't worry. Oh, okay, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, we, we get a, a spreadsheet from the, the podcast community. <laughs> People submit things they want tried out. That's cool. Ooh, community effort. I like that. Yeah, you know, not not all of them make it in, but the the cool ones. I'm just surprised <laughs> that they uh, that they weren't playing priest. Yeah, yeah, true. Well, you say that. Uh, is, is it did immediately switch to priest? Yeah, of yeah, course. it's priest. Yeah, and it's priest. Once the spectate comes down, it has to be priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rules. Oh, we got hacker on rogue now on the other side. That was Hacker on the Sif Mage that we just watched recently. No, no way. Hang on. No way. I do not believe I'm about to say this out loud. Helix Fossil 89 has just won a Mega Bundle. Helix, make yourself known, you lucky SOB. That is actually rigged, Neil. Yes, I agree. Fully, fully rigged. I can't even complain about this one because Helix was actually active. Yeah, there they are. Hello, Helix. Congratulations. Enjoy your mega bundle. But it's so easy being you, isn't it? Should I know them? No, no, no. They're just it's just a friend of mine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's actually just the most rigged thing of all time. In terms of this priest deck, I believe the goal is to play Incendius as many times as possible. 
Uh, for the for Wicked Goods Priest. Yeah. Okay. Can it beat the thirty that we saw from the the Shutter Block deck earlier, though? Uh, I think it, yes, but it's slower to do so, right? Okay. Because. I mean, it's already unlucky that Incendius is in hand because you really want to creation protocol it. Mm -hmm. But you, you do have things like power cord synchronize. I'm not sure if there's like a copy of shattered reflections. So you can sure. shuffle in and then redraw off creation protocol. Sure. I suppose there are advantages to doing it more incrementally as well because it's more it's more turns that end with one in play, right? So it's slowly exactly. upgrading all of the ones that are existing in deck as well, which is kind of nice. Yeah, the advantage to, to getting the copies that way is you guarantee more instances of, of upgrading them. Oh, well, I guess we'll just have to have two Armenthals like every control priest ever since the beginning of time. Uh-huh. I guess that's fine. It does seem like there is a gap in terms of like ability to control the early game. Yeah. Well, we've got Love Everlasting. So you could play Incendius and Power Chord Synchronize the next turn. If you if you go love everlasting this turn, <laughs> uh huh, and then you take nine this turn. Uh, ah, it's fine. Like it's fine. It's kind of dead. Yeah. Are we just gonna burn a card? Maybe. Oh no. Job done. Ah yeah, smartly takes out the higher health minion because obviously uh, you're drawing exactly two uh, eruptions off the top anyway to kill the, the two two health minions, yeah, so you're fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it matters because wishing well. <laughs> Are the legendaries playable for Language Hacker? I don't actually have Language Hacker's POV right now. They're playable no, to... enough. Sandcastle, Cadgar. Oh, oh. I believe that is, uh, what is it, Gilly? The, yeah, Ranger Gilly. Mm -hmm. It's always Mirror Image. It's never actually been anything other than Mirror Image, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we're puppet theatering that Cadgar? Yeah? Hmm, yeah, it is sort of the most potential value over time, and I feel like you're going to need some high rolls off that to be able to get anywhere. I just look at this board state and think, what I really need right now is a nice mirror image. Now that was something. <laughs> Thank you for your generosity. Hey, oh. Flames Giant! <laughs> <laughs> My goodness! <laughs> oh no. Oh no, the Sonya. Oh god. Oh Mul Multiple okay. sandcastles. Uh, this seems powerful. Does indeed. Click that at a minion that can attack. Yup. Bang. Fine, we, we always get Blizzard. Yeah, yeah, every single time. Just uh, messaging Wicked real quick. Uh, I'm sure Sonya is what you were looking forward to facing. <laughs> there we go.
I mean, at this point, I would have just played Love Everlasting and prayed for the blessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Ice Barrier, I guess. You alive? I, I'm not. I don't think so, right? Because Sandcastle. Yeah, because it can attack face and attack minion once it. Comes oh no! It it, it 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 tracks the not open yet. I didn't realize that. Oh right, 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 yeah, yeah. So the second one can still attack, but then that's still that's only fourteen at that point. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that makes it very slightly worse than I thought it was, but it's still mm -hmm. incredibly good. You know, it figures that the first sandcastle we see today is not from Paladin, it's from Rogue. <laughs> I do like how all the buffs are going on the Wishing Well as well, because that's the real hero of the piece. You have to reward uh -huh. it with, with all the stats, you know? Yep. Yeah, as soon as I saw that Rogue was getting more coin generators, I was scared about Wishing Well. It seems like you don't even run the weapon either. Yeah, I don't know. It could still be in here and just hasn't drawn it yet, maybe. But I do think that weapon is kind of hard to kill things with. Right? Like, two attack is not very much attack at all. Yeah, on three mana, it's... Ugh. It seems like it's maybe supposed to be used with the <laughs> sharp sword or whatever that makes it a 3-3, but even then. <laughs> oh, the mascot sandcastle. You love to see Oh, it. wow. We actually got another flame strike. I mean, it's just it not good enough. It doesn't though. matter. Yeah. No. Oh, wishing well. Yep, well, Wicked Good has not had a good time so far. Uh, Raven, if you are listening, can we can we go check out some McBanterface if he's doing things? Ooh. He does seem to be doing things, yeah. At long last. So yeah, it did take quite some time to uh, get to the Sandcastle, but it... Uh... You know, one mana sandcastle coming off wishing well. Yeah. Seemed to seem to do the job pretty well in the end. Seems good. Hmm. Oh, Banter is playing Fatigue Demon Hunter. Excuse me? Those are some words. Y yeah. So I mean, I'm just assuming. The I beam is what tips me off with, with the draw cards. Okay. So the the premise is you draw your whole deck. And the Demon Hunter Tourist into Priest says whenever you take damage on your turn, deal it to a random enemy. Right. So you just set it up so that, you know, when, when you've drawn through your whole deck, you have maybe a, a Sigil that draws three, or especially you have a Glaive Tar that's going to draw like nine <laughs> cards or something. Uh, and you just break the Glaive Tar uh, with no cards in deck with that tourist card out. <laughs> but how how do you then live? There's not it's not like you've got like a void virtuoso, right? Oh it, it prevents stop. it prevents the damage. It prevents the they, damage as well. Okay, got it. Yeah, got yeah, it. yeah. Okay. They take it instead of you. Right, right, right. Okay. Cool. All right. I mean, I'm down to see that work once and then never again. <laughs> Nice. You'd love to see patches off the top. Yeah, and of course, since you're drawing through the whole deck anyway, may as well get a little extra help. That's okay. We're seeing some variety of Automaton Priest coming out from uh, Jason as well. Seeing yeah, a few people it's... trying this kind of thing so far. It, it seems... makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it's going to be a popular archetype with the new Hunter cards to help it out. There she is, Arana Thrill Seeker. 
I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I, I like some thrills. I do not like rock climbing next to magma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's thrill seeking and then there's stupidity, right? There is a fine line. Okay, I mean, paraglide off the top seems like something we may be interested in. I guess just considering wayward sage lines as well, like you could sage and play it, but then you probably want to spend the coin as well because you'd be wasting a discount. So yeah, probably better to just jam it. Yeah. No pirates hit. It's tough. Yeah, you could... Coin the. Hmm. Okay, I oh, mean, it's pretty go. sick. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. All right, we're still in. We're still in. So, are there actually like control cards in this deck, or are you trying to actually be ahead on board while drawing through your entire deck as well? I mean, I think the idea is you use the pirate stuff as sort of scuff control tools. Okay. And, and you saw, like, there's I-beams. Mm -hmm. and, and the other piece is, so, because of Rest in Peace, which resurrect each player summons their highest cost minion that died this game, uh, you can use Arana with self-damage stuff to, like, try and clear in the mid-game. Sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. Makes sense. Because since it says random enemy and not just the opponent, uh, you can, like acupuncture for four damage to something uh it, it of course counts you know you hitting stuff with your face so mm -hmm. uh. instrument tech i'm guessing fishing rod right yeah. Yep. It's the only one you can run. Is there no? No, I guess there isn't. Sometimes there's like a neutral weapon in the game that doesn't. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Okay. Parachutes coming in hot. Oh, and hot coals. Hot coals is almost like just a much better demon hunter card than priest card. Because yeah, you yeah, for sure. Yeah, hot coals is huge. I didn't think about this card being in there, but that is definitely a huge card in this deck. Goes face as well. It does. Two damage to all enemies. Well, and then you know, three, if you've got it active. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know about all this, like, getting to fatigue and then redirecting all your fatigue damage business. You seem to just kind of accidentally kill your opponent on the way to getting there. Because uh, Jason's looking kind of dead. I mean, clear board, Arana Acupuncture is eight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. I was a little surprised to see the... Oh, the pit the is so greedy here. Jason is just mousing over the pit. <laughs> Can I? Can I? I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound, right? You bounced it back to your hand. You might as well just finish the line. Uh... Cowardice. We're checking the potential lethal. 
Yeah, yeah, you can see exactly where Vanta's head is at. I mean, I think it's worth doing no matter what, just because when you rest in peace, you get a Rana back for cheaper. Sure, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Worst case scenario, you clear some of this up anyway. Yeah, so you can acupuncture. Oh, it might be guaranteed. Right? Because, uh, oh, not quite. This will either clear the minion or win the game. Yep. Hey! Nice. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I can see some potential. Love those positions where it's like, okay, this this either clears or wins. Yeah, yeah. It's the classic, like, 2014 rag flip, right? Where, yeah, like, yeah. there are eight and there's an eight, then their rag is in play. And it's like, well, either way, I win the game. It just takes a bit longer one way. Okay. So still, what, 11 cards left in the deck at that point, but you did just accidentally yeah. kill your opponent before you got to the end of the deck, which I have no issue with that. It's looking kind of promising. It was a late Glaive Tar, right? It was a late Glaive Tar, yeah, for sure. Oh. oh, just been informed that Banta has uh, gone into deck building. So maybe Banta <laughs> doesn't have quite as much faith that he's found the perfect 30 as we do. The dreaded building a deck. See who else we can find. Uh, question chat. What happens if, if Ouroboros gets cast onto mm -hmm. Adaptive Amalgam, Infinite AA? Uh, pretty much, yes. It's not quite infinite, but what you're thinking happens, happens, yes. So we're going over to Borano, although it looks like this game is about to end. Uh, okay. There are, confusingly, some cast when drawn eruptions sitting in hand. Ooh, what? <laughs> uh, that have now been turned into legendaries. So Nice. Okay. I'd love to see it. Oh, wow. I just got in. This is a, this is a game state right here. This is, this <laughs> yeah. is what we like to see. Oh my god, it's against Yala as well. They have been playing this game for at least an hour and a half. I can promise you that much. <laughs> uh, no, the Therizines still have Taunt. Yep. I think Barona might have just not... It is kind of hard to see, actually, on the Golden, it is. Uh, yeah. golden Legendary Border. But that hey, will do it. it. Yeah, we got that. Took... Took the, the chill in Vol'jin to make the swap, but did get there. That looked to be your uh, infinite on Kiliax warrior. Yes. So Which we again, haven't... We've watched two games of it so far, and they both cheated the Unkiliax out on five with the, the summon spell. So I don't know what the deck does no. if it doesn't necessarily do that, but mm, we shall see. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no Renos right now because people just... I think one, maybe are tired of it, and two, it's That's a little true. challenging with Highlander to make mm. ten cards, ten new cards fit. Yep. But again, uh, I think that's if you do cheat it out early enough, as long as you get two of them dead, right? Like you can absolutely yeah. afford to get one of your Zilliax boards uh Reno and just keep going. Like, yeah, you then have to take a turn off with the one board right. space. But... Oh, uh, yeah. speaking of which, <laughs> hello. <laughs> this is, in fact, a Reno deck from Barono. Or have we moved, actually? Did I just stay on Barono? Oh, we've moved to Flare. Okay, I mean, you're missing the privilege of a, of a Reno Infinite Zilliax warrior over on Barono's side, so. <laughs> Joke's on you, I think. Sorry, who are we on? Uh, Flare, Flare versus Funky Monkey. Gotcha. Yeah, nope. Spoilers. It's not. Oh, are we gonna Are we gonna follow up? Right, stay here, Raven. I can't. I can't handle this. All of this switching. We got, we got, we got one more game in us, I think, before we do the old caster rotation. Let's let's hang out with Flair for another game, see what's going on. Give them a chance to redeem themselves. <laughs> so I'm guessing that was the uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So there was just some kind of turn five token board that got transformed into legendaries from the past on turn five and then absolutely murdered Flair because there was no response. Don't know where the tokens came from, but hey. Well, there's a lot of token generation just in terms of making 1-1 one -one pirates out of Demon Hunter, so... Mm-hmm. Okay, straight rematch, sure. Do you see uh, going down swinging in the opening hand for Flare, which has a ton of, or a little bit at least, of uh, natural synergy with the uh, location? Getting that, you can force those extra attacks in, or at least that one round of extra attacks to refresh it. Yep, yep. Oh my goodness. All right. Oh, there is the pop up book on the other side. But yeah, setting up Treasure Distributor and Sigil of Skydiving is very spooky. There's just so many ways in this Demon Hunter deck of utilizing these tokens and buffing yeah. them up with Roughhauser, with Treasure Distributor, with the South Sea Captain. And that first buff is the most important because you're doubling the attack. If this is just going to be Needle Rock Totem, which I can't imagine any world where it isn't. Oh my goodness. This Hosen Roughhauser is going <laughs> to end some lives. Yep. Get him. I get the feeling gone. there's going to be a lot of games ending this way. Guys, such a powerful curve. Like, Meltamental's big, but it does get punched through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty comfortably as well when you add Quick Pick and Deckhand into the mix as well. Oh my god, the, the cannon here as well. Okay, all right. So it just needs one of these to connect. Just needs one of these to connect. Oh, <laughs> okay, fine. Be like that. I'm unlucky. Yeah. I know it's the same on all of them, but I, I just love the cannon animation. <laughs> There is. This deck seems a lot slower. Considering it was a deck that had seven legendary minions from the past in play on turn five <laughs> last game when we were looking uh, at uh -huh. it. This is a much slower deck than I was anticipating. Well, or it's just a testament to how fast the Demon Hunter is, right? That if they hit that curve, you can find yourself behind very quickly. Now, if Hagatha pulls the new Frost spell, that is something that can do a, an extremely powerful swing. But I don't know if that's in Funky Monkey's list. Mm -mm. Right, where you summon, I believe it's two, two, four taunts, and then you gain four armor. And then yeah. if you draw it off Hagatha, you'll get the five, five as well. Uh, okay. I mean, it's a decent minion outcome. I'm not sure if there are any undeads in hand there or not. I, I mean, yeah, it's a decent minion, but, like, look at this. But, come on. Honestly. You mm -hmm. get to refresh the location. <laughs> Wants to use the deck hand, yeah. Sure. Mm 
It looks like these two are going to need a game three. They're going to need a rubber match, a rubber match to settle the score here, because this looks like it's going one-one very quickly. Yeah. I kind of feel like there's a, a a real possibility of seeing, you know, after after our two-week opening period. Uh, Hose and Roughhouse are going a little bit down in, in health, maybe. <laughs> maybe down to a 2-3. You, you make this all worthwhile. Oh, <laughs> how kind. I, I, I love that he throws bananas. It, it just makes it perfect. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge fan. I just, I, it's it's Hearthstone law, right? Like, if you eat a banana, you gain plus one, plus one. That's the rules. Everyone knows yep. that. It's been oh, very, yeah. very clear since the beginning of Hearthstone. <laughs> uh, but I think, as I glance down at the time, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm cutting out one minute early here, I guess. But, you know, it's an easy life. Uh, that, is, that is pretty much me done for the day, so I'll leave you in the fine hands of some uh, some other wonderful casters to wrap up the day. Uh, hope you've enjoyed Perils in Paradise so far. Hope it's got you excited for the new expansion. It certainly worked on me. Have a good day, chat. Have a good day, fellow wonderful casters. <laughs> Bye, everyone. All right. Later, Subtle. See you, Subtle. All right. Hey, welcome back, Lorinda. Hey. Yeah. How's it going? I heard you, most of that cast. You you sound like you've been playing and watching and everything and uh, having a great time by the sounds of it. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing is, I, I wish it was a little bit cooler here, but yeah, <laughs> some things you just have to deal with. It's not particularly hot here, but we've had a really, very, very mild indeed July, and suddenly today was the first hot day, and it's like a little bit warm. Luckily, we've got these shirts, so we're okay. Well, glad to hear that. Uh, sounds like we're going to be going over to uh, Eddie. That's what I heard too. Oh, I can't find Hello. my list. Uh, okay, see, when there's an, another word in front of that, yep. it becomes Found harder it to find on the list. Ah, oh, Raven, you're great. Raven's actually doing a great job. But that's funny. Right, we've got Rogue with... Oh my goodness, so much has happened in this game already. Double con man sitting in hand again. That's a thing that's been... Um... We've seen before that con men seem to sit in hand. Have you have you noticed this at all? Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of a strange card replaying uh, something else. Like, you, you have to wait until you find something good, and then are you going to have time to, to replay that? Uh, I actually wonder... Now, I'm not positive if it works this way, because I haven't seen anyone play this in Paladin. But if you play Conniving Conman in Paladin, do you just get two 4-4s? Four I don't believe so. I, I believe, and I haven't seen it happen, so I can be wrong. I believe that the battle cry immediately looks for the last card you played and doesn't count itself. Done. I could be wrong. Because that would actually be pretty good if you just got two 4-4s. Four <laughs> yeah, I had this conversation with my chat when I did my little review, and we came to the conclusion that you probably don't. But I haven't seen it happen to prove it yet. I mean, that would make sense. 8-8 uh, eight, eight of stats for 4 mana, guaranteed. Seems like it would be a little bit silly. Yeah, especially in Paladin. Yeah, you don't want that happening in Paladin, thanks. But it might do. Who knows? I'm sure we'll find out oh. soon enough. Fireball. Yep. Wow. I'll do it. <clears throat> The best response to rogue things. Just get him. Yeah, and con man sitting in hand. That could be... Um... I think that's one of the cards that people thought might be quite good. Um, Sotl highlighted he didn't think it was good earlier. And yeah, it's not looking... On a very tiny sample size of very skewed decks with skewed rules, it's not looking that great so far. Yeah, I'm much more of a fan of the 3-mana three 3-2 three that reduces the cost of your next card from another class. I mean, cost reduction is always nice. Interesting. That's quite an expensive card for quite a small body. Can you can you talk through why you like that so much? Well, uh, just 
because it transfers through turns, right? So uh -huh. you can you can play it out as a 3-2 and then know that you'll have that mana cost reduction yeah. on a later turn. Now, maybe it's not powerful enough to make the cut in Rogue, but in Paladin, it's nice because you can go, okay, I know I'm going to want to combo off with Lanessa next turn, so you can play that and go, instead of a 5-cost Lanessa, I can play 3-cost right. Lanessa. Like, banked mana is definitely something that is underrated in Hearthstone. You don't just calculate it. I mean, your starting point is to calculate the minion and take off the mana it saves you later, but they're often a lot more powerful than that. So, okay. I'm I'm interested. I'll see how that one goes. Let's have a look at WoW Hobbs for now. Oh, WoW Hobbs always has something goofy going on. Every once in a while, I, I catch one of his decks in a trolled in video, and it's just the most absurd thing. Yeah, that looks likely already from the three <laughs> cards I can see. There's an Insidious <laughs> in this Death Knight deck. But once again, we just see Pirate Demon Hunter. Yeah. Hands of no hands. Yeah, that's not gonna get there. I'm just gonna, gonna sit here. One, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just gonna sit here looking at this beautiful uh, signature art for Mare and the Manager. Really nice one. It is. They, I mean, there's a lot of really good ones, but uh, yeah. Marin is one of the better ones. I'm still a fan of the Tsunami. I think it's my favorite one. Oh, yeah. That one's really good. Yeah, he's, he's requeuing instantly. Good. Got to maximize time in-game. Yeah, well, you don't get this opportunity very often. So, yeah, people do tend to want to play as much as possible. You were saying that you had a list, or for, for the podcast for Wicked, have a list of um, submissions that you can use? Oh, yeah. There's there's a spreadsheet and everything. Just <laughs> That's great, though. I, I'm with Sotl. That's a great way to use the community and have the community involved. They get to see their deck played. But it's so uh, much nicer to be able to just have a bunch of decks pre-built and be able mm -hmm. to spend all your time playing during the theory crafting rather than sitting there like trying to make stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mentioned earlier I played this once and I was exhausted by the end of it. I enjoyed it thoroughly, but the two days beforehand, making sure I had anything to play at all and knowing it was probably going to be quite rubbish, um, you know, because I'm not the greatest deck builder, it's it's very, very tiring and very, very rewarding as well. So having a, a community to do it for you where you can both be happy that somebody's giving you decks, they're happy they get their decks played, you're happy that you get decks, that's really good. I'm impressed. Um, this looks to be just a value priest. Based on some of the card selections, it might actually be a Highlander priest. Oof. No. Oh, we've got a, another winner, by the way, um, for a Mega Bundle. And that is... Oh. There's so many Ws in this, I'm just going to struggle. Um... Aaron, Lord of Anwun. I'll put the name in chat as well, just so that you can actually understand that. You have won a Mega Bundle. Oh, looks like Hat's got us covered. Hat's got us, yeah. Oh, never mind. Star is a lion, priest. Are we going for it? Oh, oh no. I mean... You don't go for it. Why are you even here? I mean, I, I guess you don't need to play the, the copy. You could wait until you draw it naturally next turn. My hand is sure. Yeah. Yeah, there was a little pause there, sort of, with that in mind. So, just getting more cards. Or I suppose maybe he just likes the minions he has in hand, but you know. Yeah, but you're on stream in front of 
billions of people. <laughs> oh no. What what is Kibler tripling with Shutterblock? <laughs> I've got an idea. Probably gonna have uh, eruptions. Hmm. Could be. You do. <laughs> not not bad one to summon, honestly. No, it's just big chunky thing will do fine. There we yeah, go. There it is. Turn six, by the way. Yep. And and so this is where, like, obviously there's an advantage with the, the Shaman of being able to shuffle in 15 in one go. The disadvantage is not having a way of, like, upgrading a bunch of times. Right. Yeah, we, we've also seen that people have boards today. Like, things are staying on board. So a 210 probably isn't living very long. <laughs> Keep doing his absolute best to make it live for one extra turn. Because one turn is huge, right? Doubling the price, of, doubling the damage of those things is just massive. Right, going from two to three. Oh, yeah. Very big, very big step, yeah. Puppet theater. If oh. Hobbs were at a bit less health, he could go for the sensory deprivation, but... You can also puppet theater and try and copy it later. And then you have two of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is going to get very silly very quickly. Only going to have one lock put in, of course, not a um, five eruptions, not fifteen eruptions. But you know. But there's there's power cord synchronized as well. Yeah, Beast is gonna do very well against this. Yeah, in general, not necessarily right well, now. And and then and then you can Raden, and since they're both generated, it'll it'll resummon them for more upgrades. Oh my! You're so right. What happens if we cast one of the eruptions that we know is on top of our deck? Well, I don't think there will be an opportunity. It's just two damage to all enemies, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think you get to draw the card. No, sure. I think I think that's right. Ah, oh, Kibler's taking it off the board, so no... Uh... No synchronize, but there could could just roll out the rod and then there's one in there. Well, the fact it's all enemies is really silly when it's a mirror, just constantly. Oh, clearing. I see what's going on here. So you you bathe in bodybuilder, and then yeah, okay, dirty rat. It dies immediately. Uh, you can can also do that with rest in peace, and so you resummon yep. your highest cost, but theirs dies. Okay, I, I see the vision. Yeah, that that combo is going to be widely used, I believe, and probably slightly annoying after a while. But we got it. It's gonna be it's gonna be right for now. It, it is like multiple tech cards in the case of like using it with Dirty Rat though. Yeah, it's a huge chunk of mana. It's a load of tech cards. Do we think Dirty Rat's even going to stick around long in this meta? Like everyone's summoning 8-8s eight all over the place. Like, <laughs> do you really want to play Dirty Rats into this? That might not stay. Oh no. We're not even at uh, 20 or less. You can't use sensory deprivation to clear the 8-8. Eight eight. Mm, I'm not sure he knows this is going to summon a 1-1. One one. Yeah. 
Go. Oh, I see. All right. No, so so even though this is reduced in size, it's still considered the 8-8. So for the purposes of Raden resummoning, when Raden dies, Three. there'll be an 8-8 in there. Oh, it's such a weird game at the moment. Like These boards keep coming up where you're on a high health total. The opposing board is massive but not lethal, and you can set up two turns to clear it and set up your own swings. It's very interesting. I could do something. Oh no! Okay, so wand and other stuff. One downside here is if the wand hits eruptions, then uh, you you lose the benefit of the discount to zero. Like well, that? Bang. Oh no! Just, oh, no, just giving no again. no discounts. Although it might be lethal then. Um, yeah, I think so. Moved, it's lethal because it was twenty. I think it was it was two or four short. Yeah. So None of these have taunt. So. Whoop. Missed. That's right. K Kibler just wants this, wants this to go longer. Yeah, he's having so much fun with the eruptions that he didn't want to um, end it. I suppose you could double puppet theater, get the the shutter block mini and Marin. <laughs> oh my! Will everybody just behave themselves, please? For plan. Oh my. Such a good card. I totally misunderstood how it worked, and I still thought it might be okay. I thought you just literally ordered the three cards, so you just managed to sort your mana curve out very slightly. Uh huh. But no, you just sort your whole deck out into a great order. Great. Oh, it's a Reno deck. Okay. Ooh. That will definitely do it. We didn't see basically any Reno during the first half, but uh, now now there's been a few. Wonder if it's just more popular with the American players. I think that's probably true. Uh, I don't see that there's going to be any great meta call for Reno tonight in particular, so... <laughs> I think it's just a coincidence, and those players seem to prefer it. And look through who got where. Dead and Blue got to Silver 4. That's with no star bonus. <laughs> Meaty got to Silver 5. Weak you Silver 6. There's some players done a lot of Hearthstone today. Yeah, why don't we go to Denim? Let's have a look at Denim. Yeah, it says he's heading into game. He's waiting for a queue. Probably yeah, still the it. Yeah. I'm <laughs> just having trouble finding a match, yeah. We can go Corbett. Raven's suggesting Corbett. Let's have a look at Corbett. Yeah. Denim appears to not be getting matched with anybody because he's such a high rank. Well, we know what that deck is. Uh huh. Let's try another one. Hopefully, Corbett recues. It does seem to have the balance um, so far again on you know, theory crafting day one um, observations. We do appear to have a good balance of control and big hand buff stuff and a bit of combo and aggro. 
all the good things seem to all be viable. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think the main difference has been just the hyper aggression coming out of the, the pirate demon hunter, especially. Right. Yeah, the, the demon hunter, here we go. We've got Corbett playing, well, hard to tell, regular demon hunter right now. I don't think there's enough stuff to, to play, like, sharpshooter, Nagadish. I guess this is just, like, aggro, not, not pirate-centric. Yep, yeah, might be testing out what to do with shoppers in a world where demons are bad. <laughs> They're certainly significantly worse than before. Well, they're likely significantly worse. Never use the word certainly on a theory craft. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's just like aggro and then using the self damage priest stuff. Okay, cool. We've seen far less of the the packages being used as a as a whole than I expected. We've seen a lot of it, but yeah, I want to see how this works because. The self damage piece stuff is actually really, really, really aggressive. Oh, yeah. Well, especially if you get like the, the brain masseuse, that 2 4 undead pirate down early. Asphyxiate. Do have an excess of weapons right now and nothing to hit them into. That's one of the ways that, you know, Demon Hunter, of course, can quickly discount on a regular. Acupuncture, not asphyxiate. Gosh. Getting a bit late. <laughs> Is the masseuse you were talking of? Yep. One thing that's going to be interesting with a sauna regular is how good is a three mana or two mana five five? <laughs> like, it's a ridiculous question to ask, but we've seen some big things on the board today. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, and if you're getting it out very quickly, great. If not, then, then maybe it's just like, okay, yeah, it's it's free, but it's coming out a bit too late. The advantage to something like this, though, because it has taunt, it's like not only is it a 5-5, five, five, but it's able to protect your other aggressive minions, like a buffed-up Battle Fiend, like the uh, Sock Slither Spear. Yes. So you can use that on a turn six or turn seven, just as a zero mana five five, and just say, okay, I'm going to spam all this other stuff alongside it, and you've got to clear it all one more time. Yeah. And your health total's probably quite low because this game has been in progress for six turns already, and you've been getting hit with all these nasty things. Oof. Now, this is the counter to that, though. Frosty Decor with the five five. Uh. Oh, I, I misspoke earlier. It's not that you gain four armor. It's that both of the elementals have death rattle gain four armor. So this is just a ton of defense in one card. Yeah. yeah unless you can remove them from the game, which is almost impossible. It is so much. This is where you miss that, uh, you know, get an extra attack thing as a demon hunter. Oh, um, yeah, I know the card you mean. I'm not going to recall it right now. I mean, presently there's going down swinging, right? But there used to be, yeah. uh, what, two meta card where you could attack a minion and then have another attack. Oh, yeah. Just can't. Bring it to mind right now. I know exactly which card you mean because the argument was always well. Was didn't it? Didn't they have to change it originally? You couldn't attack in the right. If you attacked in the wrong order, you didn't get the extra attack, which was technically I, I think that bad. got fixed, but yeah. Yeah. But look at that. The 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 taunts on top of the eight armor enough to stabilize, and you know Golgoneth just sort of cleans it up. So this shaman's absorbed all that damage, swung it around, and delivered a chunk in one go because the demon hunter does so much of taking their own health total away that there yeah. isn't much left to get rid of. And this is often the thing with hyper-aggressive decks. Like, yes, they can kill you extremely quickly, but if you are able to stabilize, 
then it's possible that they get shot out very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and obviously the, the downsides of you know, hurting yourself coming to show there yep. really high, highly. Uh, we see it a lot with pain lock as well, especially with slightly weaker pain lock players where they just end up dying by accident because they they leave up 14 for a mage to do on turn 7 or something and mage goes, okay, yeah, take 14. They haven't done any other damage, so their hand is just full of damage spells. And I like the fact that we're using health as a resource more and more. It does mean there's more balancing going on in your mind and more things to worry about, which is always good. Oh, we have a look at Ron Mexico now. This could be anything. Could be Hunter. There were a lot of requests for Hunter anything. earlier. Of course, Raven goes there. <laughs> Nope, nope. Mage. Actually, mage. It's a mage. What? I can't speak. The mage has just played a load of stuff on turn three. I assume we discovered a foul spell on one that gave the sigil that summons so three discovered... pirates with charge. Yes, we did. Oh, we're playing. We're playing the Paladin package, of course. Okay, fine. Yeah. This was another one that did catch my eye. I think most of the packages into the tourist sort of catch the eye. They're all built that way by the look of it. Yeah, I really like the the Paladin Mage combination, though. Just a lot of these small spells mm. and uh, and tide pools. You're able to activate very quickly. I think one of the reasons Mage has struggled, not mightily, because it's, it's up there, it's a playable class, but one of the reasons it's not like the top tier class has been the inconsistency in its draws recently. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of good cards, but they might not come in a good order and you get pretty beaten up if they don't because your keyboard is so important. But if Mage gets a few things, like this Paladin stuff we're seeing now, this could end up being a serviceable deck. Oh, Service Ace and Divine Brew is actually going to happen here as well. Yeah, the only two drinks left, so it's just one discount, right? Because the first yeah. one doesn't change its power. It just gives it Divine Shield. Yeah. Uh, rewind coming in with for the Discovery of Magic. And we've got a Question in chat, how did Mage generate the Parachuters? Uh, we're assuming it was Discovery of Magic into a Fell spell, and that Fell spell was the uh, Sigil from Demon Hunter that uh, is two-cost Fell spell that at the start of your next turn, you get three uh, Parachuters. I never make or Falling Illidari, I guess they're called. Parachuters oh, is much better. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, you see, spot the difference and realize, nope, not in this deck, sorry. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, probably Molten Rune, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, not quite the target you want to hit. Lightning Reflexes, there's no natural nature spells in Mage. Okay, so like just. Life Binder's gift is scary. <laughs> Oh my. I guess we, we don't know if there's a Sif in here, but there could be. Chat, are you actually being active or are you just um, being silly? What are you doing, chat? <laughs> Excuse me, I just laugh at me. Whatever, chat. Being silly, 
Okay. You're being active? Okay. I think Ron maybe forgot there that uh, if it doesn't have Divine Shield, it doesn't get the attack. Yeah, seems likely. Oh, it's going to be frosty decors all around. There's the life-saving aura, which is how you generate your sunscreens, which are typically what you want to use on that service ace. Amphibious elixir, go again. Yep, seems reasonable to me. <laughs> or conductivity oh. with the molten rune for a bunch of random nonsense. <laughs> also conductivity with um, service aces later. Sure, so, yeah. It's not next, suppose. Yeah, it's, it's next time, isn't it? Is it this turn? I can never remember. Anyway, Crash doing Crash of Thunder will do, I suppose. Let me get the life saving aura down. Yep. It's weird, this was a good turn, but it somehow doesn't feel that satisfactory of a turn. Interesting. Just reapplying Divine Shield. Yeah, I mean, like... I think a 2-1. Most turns where you're just clearing, I feel like, don't necessarily feel that great. Is someone there? Nope, nobody there. In, in less, like, you're... Yeah. Getting, getting a ton of value out of the clear, but when it's just like, oh, I gotta clear up a few minions... And I had to spend all this stuff to do it. Well, we know what the Shaman's playing now, because it had to um, gaslight. <laughs> are, are you saying this is an Incendius deck? I am saying that, yeah. I know you may say I'm, I'm crazy, but... I mean, I guess 15 times 2 is 30. So theoretically, if even if you <laughs> don't get the Incendius to, to do multiple end-of-turn upgrades, uh, that, that would get there if you drew all of them. Wow, all the spell schools have been played. That is that is an eight damage inquisitive creation. Holy. That was quick. I've I've gotta imagine we're just looking for a Sif at this point. Yep. Yeah. yeah, all the other stuff's just fluff now, isn't it? Oh boy. Both players just cleaning up rather than. They're just both waiting for their deck to do their thing at the moment. Yeah, seems like. Hmm, frosty decor is a nice thing to do in the meantime. Sure is. Yeah, Ron's just, like, setting up so that if he top decks the Sif, it'll just be lethal. Yeah. Yeah, Service Ace, another way to um, make your Sif's lethal more easily, reducing cost of damage spells. Which has been the problem for some time now. Yeah, and I don't know if Ron's playing it, but there is... A you know, the Paladin card that draws your lowest and highest. So if you can use that to sort of tutor out Sif and then use Service Ace to discount the Sif. Yep, that works too. Surprisingly resilient as well, the Mage. Like, basically taking zero damage this game. Yeah. Oh, and finally some card draw. Yes. Yeah, it's been lacking for some time. We do have the next giveaway recipient. Oh, Who is one... it? Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> one MMO junkie. It is indeed. So if, if you're here, uh, DM Ridiculous Hat and claim your Mega Bundle. Congratulations. Oh, 
I'll give them to that. Well, only 12 cards. Only 12 cards, actually. That has been slow in terms of card draw. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like most of it has just been kind of in the bottom. So uh, Ron's figuring, eh, well, I, I've got the Molten Rune. That's probably what's going to get me over the finish line, along with the free Frostbolt. Just going to go ahead and spend these for some, you know, minion presence. Yeah. Because when you've got the sunscreen, like, you want stuff to be able to buff. Surprised he's um, not opening a little bit up so he can void scripture into some card draw, maybe? Sure, sure, yeah. Uh oh. Well, it's time. Yeah, it sure is. Oh my god, why does that cost zero? I don't oh, know. right, came from came from the wand. That's what it is. The wondrous wand. Okay. Is what there a it? Zola? Oh goodness. That would be great, right? You play the the mini, and then you go one cost mini Zola. Okay. Well. Time to yeah, time to voice script and look for card draw. Or Susa or tsunami. That that's you have good to too. Get tsunami, yeah. I mean you don't necessarily you in fact you probably don't kill the incendias. Oh my goodness. I I don't know. If I can play two tsunamis, I'm I'm doing it. Yeah, same. Just trying to make hand space right as well. Yeah, and get you know as many discounts as possible, right? You know, obviously it's nice if you can discount Sif, but discounting spells can be just as good. Yeah, absolutely. As long as the damage or the Sif are discounted, it's all okay. And uh, uh, here comes a little bit. I I kind of think Ron needs to like draw a Sif on the next turn though. Yeah. Now, Stargazing, I think, can hit the draw two arcane spell, right? That's reduced by number of spell yeah, schools you played. Nor Ganon or something? something right. Like that. So that would draw four cards. Okay. So, yeah, he's been spending the last couple of turns trying to get the hand space down. Although we did take an Azerite vein, but it's going to cost zero. Someone makes an interesting point, which I hadn't considered, which is that the eruptions can benefit from spell damage. So even though Shaman is not so good at necessarily getting that end of turn effect to happen multiple times if Incendius is cleared right away, they do have access to spell damage. Oh. So if you can put a bunch of spell damage out and then Gatekeeper... That would be a way of increasing them. Yeah, because what we've seen is getting to this point has been reasonably easy for the shamans, I would say, tonight. But then this happens <laughs> and you don't actually kill somebody with it. Yeah, right. Doing well, because these are still doing dead. two. I, I would have maybe waited for the gatekeeper until after they'd upgraded one more time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I have no idea what's going to happen because this is a triple gatekeeper. Yep. Yeah, okay. Could get there. If there was a novice, novice Zapper, right, then I, this would probably be lethal. Yeah, I mean, it might be anyway, but with a Zapper, like you're saying, that that's such a good idea. And I think that's where we'll end up with this, if that works. Which I don't see why it wouldn't. As, as nice as it is to get to, like, four or five, whatever, get, getting to three, I think, is going to be the, the main point you want to hit I think so too yeah get to three do this win the game because all it would already be lethal if if you, they were on three damage absolutely and your third run through doesn't hit many eruptions because they've all gone yeah then they're, they're okay. not played they, they are cast and removed from your deck when they're drawn oh no but it's also just skips the opponent's turn 
Oh, this is gonna have to get fixed in in some way. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, anyway, uh, that might just be our that might just be us actually. Um, observing. No, no it was actually. Yeah, no, was... Ron, Ron barely had had time to do anything on that turn just because it took so long for the triple gatekeeper. Yeah, that's that's definitely an issue. I'm sure it'll get looked at very soon though. Yeah, it. <laughs> people are commenting. It it reminds of the OG Shutterwalk days, right? Where it was like, well, it was one thing to get comboed. It's another thing to get comboed, and it takes your entire turn. Like you yep. just the animations take forever. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an issue. Um, but again, this is not even been released yet, so I'm sure it'll be looked at and sorted out pretty rapidly. They usually are these days. Just waiting for Raven to have a look around. Can we find anybody? Okay. Okay. Uh, we, we're finding people who are about to lose every time we have a look. <laughs> Trying to find somebody for Raven. Let's have a look at Funky Monkey. Yeah, we've seen Funky on like the other side of some matchups. We haven't actually spectated Funky yet. Ah, the cheese! Gotta get the cheese! Oh no! Don't you start, it'll encourage Raven! <laughs> Don't encourage Raven! And I feel like, I mean, maybe he's been refining it, but I feel like Funky has been on this sort of token shaman list for a little while. Yes, I think that's true. Um, it looks quite. Um, tidy though this seems to be really good tokens really good buffs and really good curve this might just be a sample size of four turns of that's making me think this but it does look really good yeah maybe say watch a couple of games of this if this one goes quickly and the druid has eight mana by the way <laughs> of course it of does. course turn four what else could we expect oh i guess uh Five, right? Doom Smells King. doom kinny, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a doom away, kinny. Yeah. Yeah. God, and with with trail mix, I mean trail mix, almost feels like old innervate, right? A little bit different, but just being able to say, oh, I'm not doing anything this turn. Let me play this trail mix, and then next turn. <laughs> yeah. At least you get a warning. It might not be a warning you can do anything about, but I do like cards that are going to do a lot of damage or pain that give you a warning. <laughs> uh, Lightning Reflex is another one that I don't mind as a card, but you know you need to know it's coming. It needs to tell you, and it does. Wonder how many Sigil of Skydivings will Funky set up here? <laughs> Yeah, not many, because the board space. Yeah, but if you assume that like they'll they'll clear up the, at least one of your minions. I guess with wave, yeah, just you can just set them up. Yeah, I'm curious too now. But this, th I mean, this makes sense as well, right? You just get a ton of uh, stuff on board this way. I mean, maybe you don't even have to play one, right? Yeah, just play the gold panner. So what Funky has done with this deck is solve the problem of token decks running out of cards. So everything is draw more cards or, you know, like the cheese, get cards, etc. Skydiving. Uh -huh. um, the things are going to live through to your turn because it's a sigil. 
And I, th I think you're right. I think Funky's been working on this, you know, a lot of this evening. Yeah, um, it's this mix of like, you know, tokens evolve, buff with wish upon a star. The the wish upon a star is what makes me think that this has been worked on for some time. Uh huh. Because it's not a card you instinctively go, oh yeah, seven man, I can't wait to put that in my turn three shaman token deck. And here we are, it's going to look really, really good. Uh, except it's not, because Trog exists. Oh, see, now here is where I was wondering if, like, it might have been nice to set up the sigils before, because mm. then if you, if you get cleared, you have the benefit of going, okay, I immediately have six minions guaranteed, and I can wave them. And that's, like, kind of the, the big advantage that sigil has over over some other things. It's that, like, yeah, okay, it doesn't do anything now. You've got to do some prep. But... Drilly? All right, not bad. What's the caster's favorite spell drinks? Um, in terms of theorized flavor they might have. Having a look. <laughs> Health drink sounds horrible. Um, Steve Breeze Chalice sounds kind of kind of nice. Yeah, that seems nice. Might have a bit divine, of a divine there. divine brew, also nice. Yeah, molten magma, no thanks. <laughs> sounds a bit painful. Uh, nightshade tea, uh, that sounds. It, it might be tasty, but it doesn't sound like it does too much good. And cup of muscle. It hurts you. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, but so do most drinks, like that are nice. <laughs> had drinks give me headaches before, just once or twice in my life. Oh my god, no, not more Doomkins, not like this. Language Hacker, what have you done? The Doomkins are back. Doomkins on parade. I'll get that to hat for you, Owen. All right. Now here's the question: Do you, do you just roll the wave right now, where both players have a bunch of minions and hope you turn out on the the better receiving end? Uh, I would, because I always will turn out on the receiving end, because I'm high rolling yogs all over the place at the moment. So. Oh, oh, I, I guess this makes you sense. This. You you can, because a bunch of these are one ones, so you can take the value trades. Oh no! Kangor is actually not very good here. Uh, yeah, sure. Wave, 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 wave. This is gonna go great. <laughs> Five versus fifteen versus sixteen mana, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm not happy about that. That's a big mana differential. This is, you know, this is why Druid is my most hated class. I see it. I mean, Rogue does exist. <laughs> it's definitely a class that happens. Yeah, oh yeah, sure. Just refresh 16 mana. No problem. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. Hadn't even seen how good that was going to be. Yeah. Thrice. Uh huh. You know, when you've got sixteen mana, it it feels a lot better to spend seven to draw six. Yeah, because then you can use your other nine mana to use the six cards you just drew. Not salty. You're salty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it, it's got to be like tokens and then wave of nostalgia, pray. Yep. You could even pouch play, yeah, the other one. 
on this way, you could you could actually yeah trade the Kangor in and get one of these eight eights. I'm just looking at the manners and just can't believe my eyes. It's very silly. But yeah, good spot on the eight eight from both of you. Oh, it doesn't have the rush though. Hmm. Oh, I didn't realize that either. Yeah, it's just the the copy that has the rush. Right, well, hold tight. We're gonna see some old minions. <laughs> What's in the box? Oh my goodness, I don't recognize anything. What are you? Okay, uh, so Black Howl Gunspire can't attack, so that's nice. Uh, I think mostly funky one out on stats there. If <laughs> Stalag was summoned this game, summon Thaddeus. Oh my god. We've got Ronga server. Oh. Never mind. Hydration station. Just never mind. Hacker's playing really fast as well. Just so much to do every turn. <laughs> Just ripping cards and seeing what happens. I know my strength. All right. So, if the Ysera lives, Funky's Ysera, that is. Okay. Then matching outfit summons two of the Death Knight 8 5 Reborn Rush. Okay. Maybe there's a clear there. <laughs> Look, Golgoneth, can we do anything with this? No. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can do the three to everything. Oh, wait, right, it costs nine. Yeah, you got to make the sea giant first and then do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if he knew that was guaranteed or not. I didn't until you told me. Because <laughs> uh, I think you want to Roaring Oceans while you still have the Sea Giant otherwise. But... Oh, I see. Okay, interesting. Yeah, you get the heal up. Yeah, all right. That makes sense to me. And still can't clear the Saras, But, yeah. you know, pretty good turnaround. Burning the Hydration Station. That's a big deal. Only one card left in Hacker's deck. I wonder if he's got enough to win the game with. I'd assumed that he'd won this many times over with the um, the mana differential. And I'm still sort of assuming that, but you know. Oh, okay, this is clever. So that is just unplayable because there's no plague shuffled. Turning the useless cards into stuff. Mm -hmm. He's now reading the stuff because he doesn't know what any of it is. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Kangor can pull the Chained Guardian and, uh, eventually, oh, maybe. Uh, oh, sure. General Vezax. And Eliza. Eliza. Oh, it's so hard to find time to hit people in the face in this um, mini meta that we've had tonight. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing a way out of this. I mean, you've got the the Murloc Grofin. Finally, finally, Funky's at eight mana. Well, Language Hacker's on 16. Doesn't seem fair. No. The whole game was over and we never got to 10 mana. But that doesn't seem to be a thing we've seen happen a lot tonight, so that's something. Uh, I think there were 
at least three Doomkins played that game. <laughs> like you do. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, what do you think of it overall tonight? Um, I think it's been pretty varied. I don't know if you agree with that. I think we've seen most classes maybe a little bit less Warlock and Paladin, but that's of course those decks are kind of already known. Yeah, you know, I, I think there's just so much to try with these tourist cards that even though we've seen a lot today, I feel like this is one of those expansions where as the weeks go on like yeah there's gonna be an initial meta but i think there's just gonna be so much churn in those first couple of weeks because people will be discovering new things with like oh what if you use this card from you know the the touristed class and what if you do this and people will be adjusting to try and take down the top dogs and things so i think there's just so much to be discovered in this expansion because there's more combinations than we've ever had before yeah, it does feel like we've only just scratched the surface tonight, which is um, a good thing, obviously. Uh, just quickly, though, before everyone starts leaving, as we are starting to wrap, uh, Mighty Deakin has won the final giveaway of the night. Another mega bundle going out there, courtesy of Blizzard. Hashtag ad. Um, so that's good. But yeah, carrying on with the, the wrapping up, um, I think it... <laughs> The, the metas always get resolved much more quickly than we anticipate, but this really does look like yeah. we're going to have to go through, like you said, several cycles of here's the best aggro deck, here's the combo, here's the control deck that beats it, here's the combo deck that beats the control deck, and yeah, it's going to go through several times I think before the meta becomes stagnant or solved, if at all. There's there's so much going on. Yeah, and and maybe not even control deck, but you know, value taunt deck. Hydration station is such a big end game win condition. That I I would be surprised if there's not some form of that that ends up in the meta. Yeah, um, I'm interested as well. I thought that we'd only see tourist decks. I thought that the new cards might not be that great in their home classes. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we saw today that a lot of the cards are good in their home classes. So that's going to be even more of those combinations you were talking about. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, just just can't wait for all of it. And uh, unfortunately, while we'd love to keep going, we, we are going to have to wrap it up for the night. So congrats to everyone who was able to win a bundle throughout the eight-hour stream. Gosh, was that eight hours that we went by so quickly? It really did fly by, I must admit. Um, thank you all for hanging out with us all night and for having fun in chat. Um, you know, the, the community around Hearthstone is good fun to be around when you're in this sort of mood and, you know, because chat's good and because we have good fun, that enables us to keep doing these things and to keep showing you new cards early and everything. Hopefully you hung out with some of your favourite streamers as well. Um, but for me, Edelweiss, Raven and Sottle, uh, that's us done for this time. So we'll but see you all, hopefully, on the next expansion. And we will be raiding someone uh, while we are closing out our stream now. Uh, there's still four more hours left for, you know, the a &E folks and anyone who started earlier and has decided to go the full 12 hours, whatever. There are a few of them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you, you can't stay here, but there's plenty of streams to watch yet. Yeah, we're going to go and have a look at Ron, I think. Um, I think he deserves it after some of that.